So, here we go. This is Jonathan Frenzel with Light on Us. Today I have a very special guest. His name, Will Keller. He's from the One Great Work Network. He's a spiritual anarchist. He's a father. And he's doing a lot of great stuff. And he's doing the great work. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Will. How's it going, Jonathan? Thanks for having me on. It's, it's, a, it's an honor. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, I really want to talk to you because I want to speak about the great work because you're doing so much amazing stuff. And yeah. How was Excellent. your path to this? How was your path to this kind of work? How, how did you start? Yeah, no, great question. Um, so pretty much I, I come from a, uh, well, I've had a great childhood and great family and very close knit and uh we've always been truth seekers i grew up on a ranch so i've always been close with nature uh but really the catalyst of my quote unquote awakening uh happened when um i was just becoming a father but coming out of the music industry of touring around the world and you know being in the hip hop scene and you know the, the all the cliche partying and all that kind of stuff it actually took me into drug addiction which was a dark time in my life. But what it did was it, um, it forced me, <clears throat> especially just becoming a father, it forced me to really look at myself and evaluate my own psyche. How did I get into this mess, right? So I had to dissect my own uh, uh, internal ecology and, you know, how do I operate? The beliefs that I hold. And this really set me on a path of self-discovery and truth discovery. So, you know, um, conquering drug addiction, um, that was my catalyst. And then I just kept going and applying a lot of the, the knowledge and wisdom that I was learning from mystery traditions and occultism and applying it in the external world. Like what is going on in reality, right? What is going on in the world? Um, and that led me to, you know, some really great, um, um, advocates like Mark Passio, Michael Tessarion, Jordan Maxwell, David Icke, and then just applying that information and understanding, you know, once you get to a certain level, you can gather all the grammar you want, but when you understand the, the moral implications, you have to, you have that obligation to speak out. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you understand this. You're doing, yeah. you're doing great work as at well. At some so, point, I mean, at some point. Yeah, at some point you're so full. I talked with uh, Sean McCann also from the One Great Excellent. Work Network, and he yes. said the same thing. And it's, I think um, it's a lot of people experience this kind of stuff that you, uh, at some point it's, okay, I have to do it. There is no other way. Yeah, I would say it was about two years, two solid years that um, I could have been going public with this information, but I just had the lack of willpower. And then finally it just built up and I said, all right, I got to get off my ass. I got to do something. I come from a music background, so I'm somewhat familiar with the tech. Uh, I, I needed to increase that, that knowledge in, in, in the modern world, modern technology. Um, so of course, taking Mark Passio's How to Become the True Media course really gave me the foundation um, to, you know, make content and to project the message of truth and freedom uh, more efficiently. And uh, yeah, but I mean, the, the moral obligation builds up and you have to do something. And that's the thing. If we want change, if we say we want change in the world, then we have to act. And it's not like these other people are going to do it for us. There's another group of people that are going to do it for us. It's on an individual basis. Yeah. There's no such thing as the collective. Right. We, we say the collective or the aggregate as a descriptive word, but the aggregate is comprised of the individuals. So it, it all it all depends on what each person is doing within their life to create change. Yeah. And it's also if you tap into this kind of work, you also get more energy. That's my experience. And a lot of yes. people get more energy. They have more energy. They're more driven. They have more they will they will get to the point where they have the willpower for change yeah oh yeah absolutely i've experienced that you know when you when you tap into the forces of justice in the universe um and you align your actions your thoughts emotions and actions and you are on your path then yes things will line up 
you will feel that um, that amplification of energy uh, and you increase your knowledge then you will get more proficient on technology and things will go smoother this is just how the, the way of the world is when you are off your path um, and living an immoral life then the obstacles will arise and you will see this yes. you will struggle throughout life and that's an indicator like hey I'm not on my path I'm doing something wrong so we can see this in our individual lives but also in the in the world um, at large right we see that humanity um, the species on this planet is in opposition to the rhythm of life which is nature natural law and the um, the consequence of that is human suffering and control and of course there are people taking advantage of that yeah big time yeah and need people also need to understand this yeah a lot of people understand about the natural law and stuff they understand this but they never get to the point where they understand the dark occult and how the how we are manipulated and lied to and get into mind control yeah Yes, yeah, 100%, and that's a huge category. Even in the freedom uh, movement, truth movement, you know, a lot of people understand natural rights. They understand that government is an immoral, violent system of control that's illegitimate, but they don't understand um, the inner workings of reality. This is occultism, how our own psychology yeah. works, how um, the natural law principles, how does reality manifest we are co-creators so we need to understand the inner workings uh, in detail and you know when people hear the word occultism right which just simply means hidden knowledge the body of knowledge of the two most important categories that we can come across right how we operate as human beings and how does nature operate and the and how they correspond but a lot of people kind of revert to um renaissance or classical occultism and um, and the mystery traditions and this is valuable information but we don't want to get stuck there we need to understand that we need yeah. to we need to, to internalize this information but then apply it in a modern way like how how can we make this applicable now in the here and now and this is what people have a hard time with i have a lot of conversations with you know just regular people and we're talking about rights and they they understand this they understand karma they understand cause and effect and a lot of people will agree with me but yet when you apply it to the world externally then their programming and conditioning really comes out and you know I call yeah. it the agent Smith effect right from the allegory of the matrix they turn into agent Smith and they start defending the system oh well we need yeah. government we need a control system because humans can't do it on their own it's like you know, so you, you see all these fallacies and the folly just really come out. And this is where, you know, the internal, uh, quote unquote, shadow work really comes into play. And, you know, doing the, the one great work um, is is a priority for for many people. It needs to be. But yet the great work, the internal great work of self-discovery and um, it, it comes first. It has to be the first process. We need to distill yeah. and eliminate all these false beliefs and this programming and conditioning, which we all have had and have still, right? This is like a lifelong process that we're working yeah. through this stuff. But, um, you know, being raised in this day and age, absolutely, we, we have this, th these programs that play out. Yeah. People are very bound to the system. I also make this experience a lot. Yeah. They're really like, yeah, I am the system. It's like they say, I'm the system. They're not like, there is a system of control. They say, I am the system of control. And then they have a lot of issues with the ego. And it's also, it's also good that you talked about make the difference between the one great work and the great work within. Yeah, that's a big point, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, what is the one great work? Well, after you do the internal work to a certain degree, meaning you get to a certain level, which is, you know, for me, I discussed it earlier, right? I was in this dark place and then climbing my way out of this hole, but analyzing myself, you know, how do I work? How does my, my psychology operate? Uh, my beliefs, my conditioning, analyzing this in detail. 
uh, and I'm you know writing it down on a, on a pen and pad. I'm a firm believer of that. Journaling, this is empowering stuff, techniques. Yeah. But once we do that work to a certain degree, then we can come out and do the one great work. Now, there's two ways to create change in reality. Philosophy and technology. Well, philosophy is the internal dialect that we can have with ourselves, which is the, the great work, right? The shadow work. Asking ourselves these deep, big questions, either about ourselves and about the world in large. But then the second is technology, and this is the, the external influence. In the modern world, we are, you know, we're tech technological advance on some level. Um, you know, and we can direct another conversation on, you know, ancient cultures and civilizations, which I, I do uh, think they were far more advanced in many levels and more of, you know, natural philosophy and, and natural technology as well. But, um, yeah. but we have these incredible platforms to get a message out. When I started going public, I used to go out on the streets with, uh, with my partner, John, of Natural Freedom League and, and a, a small group of people. And we would hold signs and we were trying to engage uh, with the public and kind of, you know, and spark these conversations. And although that was extremely valuable, you know, we're only communicating with, you know, a handful of people. Um, we would go to, you know, pretty populated uh, areas. So, you know, maybe 100 people in a day we would interact with. But yet... You and I can hop on a platform like this, and then we can share this this interview out and reach you know um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people potentially, right? And that can create a ripple effect. So we have to understand um, the modern tech and what is going on. And as you know, we're in the transition of the whole AI agenda. Um, this is scary for a lot of people, um, but yet um, I would prefer more natural modalities. But yet we have this technology. We need to understand what it is, what it's being used for by the controllers and the social engineers, and how can we use this to our benefit. Um, so this is all types of technology. Technology is just a tool. It's neutral. Yet it depends on the wielder of, of the technology. Who is using it? How are they using it? And that's the key. So uh, I use a lot of AI um, programs as well to promote, um, you know, shorts, YouTube and Facebook shorts yeah. and, and do um, captions and all this kind of stuff. This is time management and this can help, um, you know, hone in and create more efficient content because ultimately, you know, what is the content? We're talking about truth and morality, how to become a better human being how can we stop the violence and the coercion and the duress in in the world and what's going on this is a powerful important topic you know i'm not making cat videos or anything like that so uh yeah and i've, and I've gotten this before so, you know um some woman was like oh you're a podcaster you're a content creator a dime a dozen and i'm like well yeah i i guess yeah i'm a podcaster i i'm a content creator but yet what is the message what's the content that's what yeah. is important. So um, we definitely need to understand the technology, which I was resistant for, you know, a good year. Um, after my music career, I took about eight years of really just getting into um, more of a connecting with nature and the natural world. Uh, I didn't have a TV, um, you know, used a flip phone for a long period of time, gardening all the time, which I still do, but really wanting to kind of escape to the woods and, you know, have a, a homestead and that kind of stuff, which, you know, that's just one polarity. That's the incorrect polarity. Uh, that there is a balance, right? I can still homestead and connect with nature and stuff like that, but yet I can still use technology and to get that message out and to, um, you know, do the one great work. So simply... The one great work is creating content, creating a message of truth and freedom to influence other people to look within themselves and to, um, to eliminate their false beliefs, the belief in human authority and government, and to inspire them to recognize and take action on the moral obligation to speak out. Because as you know, the law of freedom uh, part of natural law is uh, in cause and effect. As morality increases, freedom increases. As morality declines, 
slavery or freedom declines and freedom increases. So this is a numbers game. We need numbers. And this is a tricky place for people because we can't force anyone to do the internal work, right? So that's why <laughs> yeah. I always say that we need to become an artist um, in in our craft and in our message where we um, – we can't force anyone to do this, right? So all we can do is do what we can and to uh, better ourselves and better our content and our message. And that will ripple out into the ether and create um, – uh, and it will reverb and people can resonate with that. And hopefully that sparks inspiration because inspiration can lead to change and action. Yeah. I think it's also important to have, um, how do you call it, righteous anger, I think you call it in English. Um, yep. It's also important to have this, to have this, but it's also very important to have this inspiration, like, yeah, I want, I want to do the great work, like this energy, like this, wow, it's huge, and I, it's, it's like a vision for the future, for a better future, where we can live in peace and harmony. I, I agree with that, people, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100 percent um i believe it was uh thomas jefferson said that you know first you have to get angry um and this is and i butchered that quote but righteous anger all emotions have a purpose and a reason and we need to use this as almost a a tool when you first part of the internal work you have to understand like like myself coming out of drug addiction i had to look into the mirror and realize that i was i was messed up and I was caught, I was doing this. It was self-inflicted. I was in a self-induced suffering, state of suffering. So you have to look at the dark aspects. And once you kind of get <clears throat> a grasp of what is going on in the world, truly, this should make you upset that we are being violated every day, that people are completely unconscious to the way the natural world works and how it manifests. So the majority of people are complicit. We are doing this to ourselves. And there are people taking advantage of this ignorance and using it to their benefit and to their profit. So we are being violated on all levels, um, you know, and even young children as well, which most parents are doing this to their children due to their ignorance, right? I, the yeah. big topic that I talk about is... Uh, is conscious parenting, right? We are in opposition to the way things are to nature, and yet our children are, um, you know, they're reaping this um, this pain and suffering. We are passing this uh, generational trauma down to our our children. Um, so it's it's really important. You need to, we need to use that energy of righteous anger and use it as a motivating factor. This is the element of fire. So we can harness this and use this to motivate ourselves. It's really important. Just like every emotion, even anxiety, this is a signal telling you something. Emotions, which is just energy in motion, it's a compass for ourselves and for our psyche where we can actually come to understand ourselves and wield these emotions to our benefit. So it's really important. Um, you know, contrary to the like the new age movement right i mean where you know ignorance is bliss and it's all about following your bliss and don't get angry you know if you get especially for you know men like us right it's if you're a man and you get angry oh that's toxic masculinity that's all bullshit <laughs> that's you know it's yeah i agree we are we are men and we uh part of you know we're air and fire so we have, you know, logic, we're, we're good at problem solving, but we also have that fire. Fire is an active principle. So we, we affect change in the external, in external world. You know, we build stuff, we can, um, we're a protector. So harnessing this emotion of, of anger, uh, righteous anger, right? Because there it's, it's justified. It, you know, we are being violated. This should piss a lot of people off. But yet it's important to control um, and, and understand our emotions and, and harness that, right? Um, the difference would be, you know, someone that's pissed off all the time over petty stuff. Someone cut me yeah. off on the freeway. Um, you know, I keep tripping outside when you get mad at that constantly, you know? I mean, this is, that's, that's petty anger. Um, so there is absolutely a difference. So, you know, good point. 
there is. I saw you. I saw your short. I like. Okay, here we are. I saw your short about where you where you uh, where you spoke about men need to be a warrior. I like that message a lot on YouTube, and I think a lot of men lack this ability to be a warrior in this world and not in, on somewhere else or here or there, not just here on Earth. Be a warrior on this Earth, yeah. And yes. I think a lot of men have, yeah, okay, we all have trauma, I think, and a lot of men have daddy issues, and then you have a Trump who's like, oh, yeah, I'm a man, blah, 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 and they go for that. Mm -hmm. They go for the, yeah, that's not the real deal. The real deal is what you spe spoke about or what you speak about, being a warrior, and not like, oh, okay, uh, there's a daddy and he's fixing my stuff. And uh. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. And, and this is a this is a hard truth for a lot of people, especially men, to understand that, uh, especially in modern culture, right? The the culture, the how society is, what they are cultivating is really the inversion of nature, right? It's it's flipped on its head. So, you know, men are demonized and, and you know, and th there's a physical component to this, right? There's, you know, a war on testosterone and, you know, being too masculine and this kind of stuff. It's, um, it's, it's detrimental. And unfortunately, a lot of men fall into this, um, you know, due to how they were raised um, and the way culture propagates this kind of stuff. Um, but going back to the physical component, right? I mean... Diet is huge. Uh, we can look at a lot of the food where it is heavy in estrogen and these and the microplastics and all this stuff that um, that that attack the receptors that attack our body. Um, you know that lower testosterone. Uh, testosterone used to gradually decline when you get into your forties. Right now, it's plummeting in in men in their twenties. Right. A lot of people, you know, yeah. we call them soy boys. Right. When you, a lot of eating a lot of soy and this kind of stuff, which is it can be healthy, but not to to an extreme because it's full of estrogen and it will lower testosterone. Women need testosterone, too, but not at the level that men do. Testosterone gives us that fire. It feeds that fire element. And this is what gives us motivation and inspiration. And, um, you know, it's it's really men have a responsibility to step up as protectors and providers step up and, and go public and talk about all the all the erroneous, you know, bullshit that's going on. And we don't see this that much nowadays. Um, a lot of people submit and they're com uh, complicit to these institutions and to government. Um, they the inversion of nature goes you know, it, it's actually predominant right now with women. We can see this with the tran transgender uh, movement. You know, men can become women. Women can become men, uh, which is, you know, this might piss a lot of people off, which is a mental illness. This is a detachment of reality. When you start mutilating your body, right, you are uh, in a disassociation psychologically from the way the natural world operates. And this is due to a chemical imbalance in the brain. This is due to mind control and conditioning and programming. Um, and this is this is in the for forefront right now. And the and the problem with this is that they're teaching this to their to their children, um, to their yeah. children, and to you know children in general. And the the purpose for that is um, to condition the the youth. Right, because the youth is gonna is gonna make the the future society, the the future control system. So it's always distract the older generations and program and condition the younger generations. So stepping into that warrior mindset, that means becoming a warrior. You're at war with something. This is what the word means. You're at war with tyranny, violence, coercion, duress. You're at war with yourself, with all the the issues, the false beliefs, the insecurities, all the shit that we need to, to get rid of, we need to analyze, take a look at, and, and analyze and get rid of this so we can be our, our better selves and we can uh, have self-development and, and empowerment and step out into the platform of the world and raise the voice of truth, right, for 
morality and and freedom yeah exactly so yeah it's it's really it's really important um i would i would say that you know i've been seeing a lot of women stepping out stepping up and and doing the one great work which is phenomenal yeah. and they're pissed on men they're pissed on men then they like <laughs> oh you fuckers you don't do anything <laughs> what kind of man do you are yeah, no, yeah. it's and it's, should, it's great yeah. to see these content the, the female content creators come out because the feminine dynamic is huge. They hold um yeah. influence over men. So it's really important they they have they have a role uh in this endeavor of, you know, creating freedom and fighting against tyranny and a, a huge role as well. Uh they have a huge influence on the household. Um I look at it as, you know, the the man is the foundation but the women is the the woman is the walls and the roof right the saying goes that a um um a man can build a house but a woman will make it a home so there's these oh, complementary like energies of masculine and feminine that we need to recognize we need to understand and embrace that it's not a, it's not man versus woman wom- woman versus man the most empowering force is a man and a woman coming together is masculine and feminine coming together because that unification that alchemical wedding is a force to be reckoned with because it is in harmony with nature and this is what the social engineers do not want to happen they know if they can put a divide between men and women then they they just they gained 50% Right, it's fifty percent men and women. They've yeah. gained to their advantage, and all they have to do for a dialectic is just set off one side of it, and and then and the other side will be pitted against uh, the traverse. So, it's it's there's so much going on, and there's so many effects and so much uh, dialectics in the world. It can be. It can be brutal for someone, right? And we, we see a lot of people following the alternative news and all these different um, situations and events that are going on, which it's cool to have an awareness of that, but there's no change there, right? Yeah. You, we need to get down to the causal factors, and this always lies in the mental realm. This is the spiritual realm where we understand the cause that leads to the effect and um this is really important this is where the one great work um steps into it's understanding the causal factors of how we are in the position the situation that we are in and how do we get out right so we um you know so checking out the effects can give you an in, um inclination of the cause but yet to create change we need to get to that causal level the root of the problem exactly it's pretty easy <laughs> actually but humanity yeah, no, you're is right. just focused you're, there on the effects yeah you're right a lot of the things we talk about are are simple they are very simple the problem yeah. is you know ourselves our programming and conditioning always steps in the way like what you said Ego identification. I am the system. People relate and they identify with their programs, with their their programming and conditioning, um, and that is the huge problem. And this is where the one great work comes into. Right, we, we're influencing people to take a look at themselves and identify those issues that they have within their own psyche. And it's a tricky process. This is why it is the great work, the one great work. It is hard. It is hard, and it's going to be a lifelong process for a lot of us, right? This is going to be many generations of doing this kind of stuff. It will get, it will speed up the more people um, do the moral thing and go public and talk about this information. As that increases, we will see, uh, you know, the ripple effect. It, it will start to increase, but. I've seen a lot of people start d- doing content and doing the one great work and then quit. Like after, you know, a year, year and a half, maybe two years, they quit because they said, oh, well, I'm not creating any change. I'm not reaching anyone. We need to get out of that mindset. Um, yeah. We need to do this because, number one, it's the right thing to do. We need to do it for truth. And number two, um, 
what else are you going to do? You're just going to sit, you know, you're going to spiritual bypass and take a step aside and just let all the, the tyranny and the coercion get worse. I mean, I, I have a daughter, a 10-year-old daughter, so she's a huge motivating factor for me to do this work as well. But we need to um, really tap into our kind of our own flow state of finding our niche, whether that be writing a book, doing a podcast, doing public presentations, this kind of stuff. We need to kind of get to know ourselves and where our, uh, our attributes are and then focus on those and kind of dial those in. And um, I, I, I love doing this work. Um, I love doing, you know, doing the content. I love interacting with people like yourself. Um, when, you know, when you meet someone that understands natural law, there's that initial connection because this is how a relationship is formed. It's truly formed when one, when each person understands truth and nature, then you have a relationship that has a foundation in first principles so, you know, meeting people that understand the great work and natural law, it's, it's great. I love that. I love connecting with like, like minds. I talk about a lot of dark topics, you know. Um, it's not something that I, I love doing, but I know it's the right thing to do. So we need to step into um, the, the message of truth and embody it. Yeah. I like that you said you, you don't use your daughter for, for an excuse. It's your, she's, she's your motivator also. I like that because a yeah, lot of she, people are like, ah, oh, I have a job and I have, I've, I have children and stuff. Excellent point. And I've heard this a lot and I've experienced it my, my, myself, right? It's like when you have kids, um, you know, unfortunately we need, uh, monetary sustenance in this, in this yeah. modern world, right? We need, um, resources, and it can be tricky finding the time, but when you apply your willpower and you really sit down and you dial in the modalities and the methods of, of getting this message out and your schedule, there will be sacrifice. Every human being sacrifices something. Uh, sacrifice means to give away to. So, you know, we're, we are sacrificing time and attention right now. Um, other people... You know, might be watching, binge watching Netflix. They're sacrificing their time and attention to that as to that as well. So everyone sacrifices something, and it really took me, it took a lot of time to kind of dial in my schedule and figure out how am I going to balance this and look at my life and and sacrifice certain things um, f to do this type of work. And that's the key. A lot of people do not want to sacrifice their uh, their earthly pleasures and desires. Um, and a lot of people are hopeless, right? They see that, oh my gosh, they, it's, it's the biggest endeavor to try to change the minds of the majority of the people. But yet, like you said earlier, you know, I mean, mighty forces will come to your aid. I've met a lot of people that have said, hey, I found your content. It was great. Let's do an interview. Let's do this. Let's do that. And that, that is awesome. That's, that's a good sign. Um, you and I just met, I'm going to check out your content and I'm going to share it out to the world. So this is how we support each other and we get that message out. So it's really important. We have to sacrifice. And I, I understand that I, I don't want to be, you know, years from now when my daughter's grown and, you know, hopefully not, but if the, if the, the situation is worse and she comes to me and asks me, dad, what did you do? Um, what did you do about all the, the tyranny and the control that's going on in the world? I, I dread that question. I don't want her to ask me that question because I want her to know that I fought for freedom and for tru truth and justice. And she knows that. She's very, she's very proficient in a lot of the, the concepts that I talk about. And the key is not getting her to memorize certain type of information. The key is giving her the tools so she can understand on herself, uh, within herself. Um, yeah. You know, kids are, especially young kids in that formative stage where they're soaking up information, are really good at um, memorizing, especially when repetition's involved. But if they don't understand it, then 
It's all for nothing. This is what the public schooling does, right? It's all about repetition and memorization and, and atomizing children. You know, we need to get our, the, the youth to understand what natural rights are, what nature is, what truth is, and what freedom is. So yeah. it's, it's a big project. Yeah, and understanding is also always combined with action. <laughs> it's not, there's nothing yes. like, yeah, I understand that, but you don't do shit about it. Or I don't do shit about it, then I'm not, I didn't understand it. That's the thing, yeah. Exactly. And this is the, the heart of the, the law of manifestation. Manifestation is, is, is based upon our actions. Our thoughts and emotions precede that. So really, it's unity consciousness. As I think, so I feel, and so I act. This is what people have a hard time with, right? I mean, the New Age movement thinks, oh, it's all about what you think and what you feel. You know, oh, I'm, I'm thinking and feeling like I'm going to win the lottery and make a whole bunch of money and nothing happens, right? Th this is bullshit. This is not how it works. If you want to create a business, you can't think and feel that business into manifestation. You need to act. Even the word action, you can, we can break it up into, into, into two segments. You have act, which act means to perform, and then you have ion, which ions like a charged particle. It's energy or our eye on, right? So we have action. So this is performed energy. And this is how we, when we perform our actions and our behaviors, we actually can move the morphogenic field and create change in reality. So yes, absolutely, we need to act. It's all about our actions when it comes to change and what we do. Very important. Um, uh, yeah, you know, too many people uh, are kind of information junkies, right? They, oh yeah, they, big time. And here, this is also something with the masculine too. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they seek knowledge, they seek knowledge, seek truth, but yet they get stuck in that uh, that uh, entrapment of just constantly taking in information and knowledge. They're missing the uh the the speak truth the executing principle you need to apply it this is what wisdom is right wisdom is knowledge applied so it's got to be applicable in the world and we need to act on it and this is where we can um create the biggest change through our actions yeah we and need sometimes to raise our voice yeah yeah Absolutely. Uh, my partner, John, and I, we, we have a, uh, a slogan. We call it detachment activism. So what that means is you're detaching from the system of control and violence. You're detaching from government. You're not supporting it. Um, you know, you're not using these institutions. But by detaching from that, you're also using an um, alternative means, which is the action, right? Um, you know, banking could be one where, you know, so detaching, taking all your money out of these corrupt banking systems and using cash, investing in gold and silver, using the barter system, um, you know, using your your cash to local mom and pop stores and family owned businesses. Uh, people don't understand that. I mean, when you don't use cash, then the value goes down. Right. I mean, again, these are fiat notes. These are just paper. They, they, all they are is, is a construct of human beings. They have no basis in the natural world. But what it represents, it represents energy. It's a, it's a medium of exchange, of course, but it represents your time and attention. So, um, you know, a lot of people, when we do this work, you know, so I appreciate donations. And I don't say it that much, um, but yet if somebody out there that's listening – if, if you like Jonathan's content, donate to them, D donate to him or any content creator. This is a, a huge, huge part because like, like we said, there's sacrifice, there's resources. What you're saying with that when you donate, you're saying that you have you found value in the time and attention that Jonathan or another content creator has put into this work. So unfortunately, you know, we need resources to make this uh, move along um, and – but regardless, I mean, I, I don't get many donations. I appreciate everything that I do. I still have a nine to five. 
This is part of sacrifice. You know, we got to have jobs as well and do this on our downtime, staying up late, doing editing and all this kind of stuff. This is part of the one great work. I wouldn't change it for anything because I know that, uh, you, that I'm doing the right thing. And this is what people need to understand about the one great work. We need to do it because it is the right thing. It's the correct thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. So very important. Yeah. And it's also very important to use your heart. And if I'm listening to you and I feel in my heart, it's like, yeah, he's the real deal. He, when it, it's just my intuition tells me that. And a lot of people also need to get in touch with their intuition, not just the intellect. It's like what you, what you said before that. It's like a lot of men, especially also women, but a lot of men like, oh, yeah, okay, I need more information. I need more information. And they... They never get into their heart, and mm. there is the there is the energy that we need to connect with to do the great work. Yes, that's man. the driving force in my experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. The heart, the heart space, the the first eye, right? With third eye, first eye. This heart space. This is. I mean. This is where unity consciousness comes in. The heart is the, the generating uh, factor, the generating principle. Um, because what we care, what do you care about? This is the, the feminine aspect that is extremely important um, when it comes to manifestation and creating change. I think a lot of people that I've talked to, they intuitively, they can feel it that something's not right within the world, within humanity. Yes. I would say everyone can, but their programming and conditioning kind of softens or deafens that voice of the heart space that's in constant communication with us. So it's about, you know, aligning our thoughts and our emotions, our mind and our emotions and our guts, which is the action. But yes, care, this is a... a, a a huge question that I, I asked myself in my dark days, right? And people should ask themselves uh, constantly. This is a, a, a continual question that you ask. What do you care about? Because obviously energy flows where attention goes, what you care about. And when we look at the world, you know, people don't care about freedom. They don't care about prosperity. They think they do, but they don't. And when you deafen that sound, when you ignore the heart, uh, that has detrimental effects on the human being. For instance, someone that is a liar or an immoral person, a bad person, right? They do not heal. They do not progress. They do not evolve. They can eat all, they can have the best diet in the world and supplements and exercise and all this. But if you are a bad person, an immoral person, a liar, you're in that satanic mindset of egotism and relativism, right? You will not heal. You will generate sickness and illness at some point in your life, not to mention the karmic repercussion of just your your spirit we're here to we're here to grow and evolve a soul we don't come into this realm with a soul and you know we're good and everything's all set no way we are here to learn what it means to be human and to evolve into higher consciousness and this is very much in alignment with the heart space um, you know the heart itself has you know the bit the the biggest electromagnetic field bigger than the brain itself uh the guts as well ha has has a large uh magnetic field as well but the heart is it pumps the blood what is the blood the blood is the life force it carries the life force throughout our body so it is the, the generator and and this is the generative principle that what we are generating in our lives and into the world so huge you know you can look at the g for a generative, right, is also in um, the tradition of Freemasonry. That's what the G stands for. A lot of people say it stands for God and uh, geometry, but it's it's mainly the the generative principle of care, true care. So yeah, man, good point. Yeah, Genesis. 
Genesis, I'm right now doing one, a, yeah. a translation of your... Uh, what was the name? Uh, the, it's all about morality? It's all about morality. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that because load, uh, most of my stuff is in German. But I also started doing stuff in English to reach more people. Th but, that, that's a, that's a huge honor. You're the first person that that wanted to translate one of my presentations. That I that is huge. Stuff. I, I, I give that. you huge respect for doing that, and I highly appreciate that, man. That is awesome. You know, s someone that is is speaks multiple languages. You're at a huge advantage, right? Because you can take other people's work. You could take Mark Passio's work or whoever and translate, but also within yourself, you have multiple languages. So now you're reaching a larger demographic. Uh, a good friend of mine, Dominic, he uh, is from Canada, but he, it's on the French side. So he was doing content in English, uh, but yet, you know, he finally went full on, full board to the French audience. And now his content is he's reaching a lot more people because there's not that many people uh, in, in the French speaking language that that do the one great work. So it's almost like an untapped demographic, an untapped market uh, to get this message out. So that's huge, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you doing that. I'm, I'm glad you like that presentation. I like your stuff a lot. So I think Thanks, I will brother. do more on that. Yeah, I like awesome. it. And it's very important because a lot of people uh, don't speak English. So it's very important to also reach them. I think in the long run, everyone should learn English to some extent. But also that we can, that it, this process will be faster. We need to do it in our... Do you call it mother tongue? I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. A uh, natural tie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. For sure. And that's the th And th this is what the one great work is about. It's about inspiration. If I sum it up in one word, inspiration, inspiring people to take action. And, and we need this on a global level. The social engineers, they, this is the illusion, right? That we're in separate countries and every country is doing their own thing. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's the illusion for the majority of people. This is a global network working hand in hand in tandem, right? So we need, we need people to step up and, and uh, take action in all languages, in all walks of life, everywhere around the world so we can we can drown out the the voice or that sound of deception and and increase the uh, the voice of truth yeah this knowledge is for this inspiration this knowledge is for everyone out there it's not our it's like a treasure to the world it's like a big gift from the creator of the universe 100%. This information is not new that we're talking. We don't own this information, yeah. right? This information is embedded in nature, right? Like you said, a gift from the creator. 100%. Nature is the like the real Bible. It's the real constitution. At any point in time, hum human beings can use their own capacity of logic and reason, right? We have the hardware to evaluate sorry my dog he's got always got to be on my lap we can evaluate <laughs> and discover and come to understand natural law how reality operates who we are our purpose we can form an intimate relation a uh, relationship with creation and the creator all we need to do is, is tap within ourselves and within nature herself because we are not separate from nature. We are a part of nature. And the, the morphogenic field is what Rupert uh, Shel Sheldrake coined it, right, which is the, the field of information, of consciousness that is all around us. It's available for anyone at all times. So really the one great work when we get this message of natural law out it's we're not teaching anything new there's nothing new under the sun truth is truth it's singular eternal and and objective but what we are inspiring is for human beings to remember 
remember who we are, remember our connection to nature and our our role, the stewardship that we that we our responsibility, right? Responsibility, our ability to respond to being in this school of life um, here on this this reality. Yeah, know thyself. Exactly. Absolutely. Know thyself and you will come to know the gods. So, which is an, it, that's a metaphor, right? That's an allegory. Not like gods, like people in the sky, beings in the sky. These are archetypes of the human psyche and of nature, forces of nature. So it's a profound quote. That's the quote from the uh, Oracle Delphi. Um, yeah, man, it's good stuff. Yeah, and you can find it everywhere. That's right. If you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're into other stuff, you will find it everywhere. When you know where to look for it, you will find it. Or if your consciousness is at some level, you will find it everywhere. Absolutely. And this is something that I talk about a lot is is diving into the, the natural law principles or the hermetic principles and go go through each principle and really kind of take that in and apply that to yourself and see how that operates within your own life and in the natural world. You know, mentalism, uh, correspondence, polarity, vibration, rhythm, cause and effect, uh, mental gender. Um, it's really important that we un have a firm understanding and this is a growing understanding, right? This, like the information of the one great work is is really just trying to get hu uh, humans up to par, up to the, the foundational first principles of existence, of reality, of truth. And then from there, we can evolve as a species and, and evolve our understanding of natural law and the natural law principles and truth itself, right? It's not an end of the road type of deal. This is a yeah. spiral. This is the spiral path spiritual spiral so this is is what we're really doing we're trying to get up to just par but when you have that foundation of the natural law principles and and you can see the correspondences um happening within your life and and in the external world i mean it is empowering you're you're seeing the synchronistic the, the synchronicities that which is pretty much recognizing the patterns which is exactly what consciousness is, pattern recognition. You can see the, um, the synchronicities in your life and bringing it back to like kind of the beginning of the conversation, knowing when you are on your path or when you're off your path. Um, it, it's, it's a language. It's like in constant communication uh, with us if we have the ears and the, eye, the ears to hear and the eyes to see. Um, so it's, it's empowering stuff, man. It is. All right. I think we're good for today. Awesome, man. That what? was great. Yeah, I loved it. Really, I really appreciate your work and your, and your stuff. What people, what do people need to check out when they are looking at your stuff? Or what's your, uh, maybe share some social media and stuff. Excellent. Yeah, like a one go-to link is uh, Linktree slash Will Keller. You can get to all of my links from there. Or you can go to the One Great Work Network um, and check out my profile. All my content is on there under Will Keller. And then, of course, my, um, my official website is Natural Freedom League. So um, Linktree slash Will Keller will get you to all my social medias. I'm on, you know, all of them pretty much. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all under Will Keller. And Jonathan, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Thank you for doing the one great work. This was a great conversation, and I would love to come back anytime, my brother. Yeah, would be very nice. Thank you. I appreciate, and yeah, hopefully we will come together at some point later in time. Excellent, for sure. All right. Okay. Then, until then, bye-bye.